Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial for MamoWorld.com. My name is Matthias and today I'll show you how to animate cogwheels with the help of the cogwheels eye expressions. We first cover the basics of this eye expression and then look at some special cases like wheels that have no teeth, yeah, so barrels, uh, uh, and then finally also we look at motion blur and 3D layers. But now let's start with the basics. So I start with dragging my background image into a new composition. So this is just a Photoshop image in this case. And then we have several images of cogwheels. And I also drag these in. I start with two wheels, one with eight teeth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one here has 40 T's and the T's are also indicated here in the name of the images, which is quite convenient. And now let's say we want to rotate them. Yeah, so I select both of them and click on R for rotation. And now I can keyframe the rotation of one of them. So I set a keyframe here for rotation zero and let's say here at the end we'd have two full rotations. Now this one rotates and the other one of course does not. And of course you could keyframe the second one manually, but as soon as you start doing here complex keyframings on the one, say with some easy ease keyframes and whatever, it will be very complicated to get the second one rotate accordingly. And with the eye expression, this is really, really easy. So we have here our cogwheels eye expression. And all we need to do is the eye expression needs to know by which other which other wheel should our wheel follow? Yeah, in this case, it should follow the small one here. So we select the rotation of the small one and click here to link it to the first parameter. Now this is in the first one, we always link the, the other wheel that it should be connected to. And now we just need to say how many T's has the wheel itself. In this case, we said it has 40 T's. Yeah. 40 and the other one, this one has eight teeth. So we say other wheel has eight teeth. Select the wheel that we want to automate in its rotation and click on apply. And now you can see that it's rotating exactly with the first one. Uh, very nice. And now we can continue with this. Let's say we want to add a second wheel. This one here is even larger, has 150 teeth. And let me scale down all of them. So I select them, click on S to scale them down to say 40%. Uh, of course, now the positions don't match anymore. Yeah, so we can easily correct that. Say we set this one here. And the nice thing is even though they are scaled down, uh, the expression still uh, works perfectly. Yeah, so it's independent of the scale, very nice. And now this one, say it should be driven by this one here, like this. Um, of course, this one is not yet rotating yet. So what we do is we go to eye expressions and reset it and say now this 150 T's wheel should be driven by this 40 T's wheel. Yeah, because they, they are connected now. Again, I select all of them and click R to reveal the rotation. And now we select this this one here and link it because now the big one should follow this one. So, okay, we have linked it here. And now we say our big wheel has 150 T's and the one that it's connected to, namely this one here has 40 T's. We select the big wheel and click on apply. And again, everything works as expected. One nice little detail is, say we want this one to be here at the bottom and it should be exactly in this position. Yeah. You see that the teeth don't match. And we can correct that by modifying here the value. So it's still keyframable, although the expression is active. Yeah. So this means we can take it here and rotate it as we like. If you uh, sh uh, keep the shift or the control key pressed, you can also uh, modify it in very small uh, values like this. And now we said, okay, it should not start at value zero, but at 1.3 degree. And nevertheless, all the rotation is still working perfectly. Yeah. And again, as soon as you update here, let's say it should move here faster or whatever. Yeah. All the other rotations depend now on the single rotation of this small uh, wheel that you can keyframe. And even if you do here stuff like, say we 
go keyframe assistant uh, easy ease. You can see the keyframe now changes. Uh, still, all the animation perfectly follows this one uh, wheel here. Very nice. One other special case is the case when you connect two wheels uh, directly. So let's say we take here again such a 40 uh, or again such an 8 teeth wheel. Yeah. One thing that is important is you can see that now the expression stopped working and this is because this one here is called wheel 8 that. Yeah. And this one is exactly the same name and therefore now all the expressions think they are connected to this one and not to the second one that is keyframed. So make sure you have unique names. We rename this here to wheel 8 z 2 and now again our expressions are perfectly working. I scale this one also down to 40%. And let's say we want this to be connected here. Yeah, so they are they should be like glued together. Yeah, for this of course you don't need any expression at all. You can just let me drag this over here on top of this one, of the 40 wheel uh, of a 40 teeth wheel, and you just parent it. Yeah, select it, drag it here, and now of course it nicely moves with the other one. So this is no surprise. But what happens or what do we do now if we Say we take another of these large ones here. Again, make sure to give it a unique name. Two, like this. We scale it such that it fits in the scale with the other ones. And let's say we want to connect this one here like this. Uh, what makes this special is that this wheel that is connected to is parented. Yeah? So you can see this one is the one that we wanted to connect to and if we look at its rotation, let's reveal here the rotation of all of these. So rotation of this one is 90 degrees and it doesn't change at all. Yeah? This is because it is parented. Yeah? So actually the bigger one is uh, rotating and this one here is just following but it has no rotation on its own so there you can see this uh, value of 90.8 in this case stays constant so this means in our i expression if we reset it again it makes no sense to link to this rotation value yeah if we set this here and say this one is connected to this one it won't work because this one is not rotating at all yeah it's a bigger one that it is parented to so this one, yeah, this is parented to this one and this is the rotation that actually matters. Therefore, we need to link to this bigger one. Uh, link it here. And this just depends on your parenting. So if your layer is parented to another layer, link to the rotation of this parent instead. But if you look now at the number of t's, yeah, this one here has 150 t's. And now here we don't enter these 40 t's here, but these eight t's yeah, because this one is connected to these eight t's. So it's like take the rotation from this 40 t's wheel but take the t's itself from the smaller one because to this one it is connected. Okay if we apply this to the bigger wheel, apply, you can see it nicely rotates with it. Um, we need to again uh, modify here just the keyframe value to, to make it fit and now it's looking like this. So already let's take a look at the RAM preview. Pretty nice uh, animation and all of this just uh, with the help of these expressions. Okay, another special case now is the one of uh, cog wheels or chain wheels that have their teeth at the inner side. I drag this one in here. Where is it? Uh, it's quite large. Let it. Let me scale it again to 40%. So this one here. And let's say we wanted to connect. Hmm, where can we connect it? It's already quite crowded here. Let's say we put it here. Yeah, connect it again to this one here. 
And maybe let me delete this one here just to make it all here a little bit less crowded and better visible. I move it in place where it should be. And in principle, you might think this is again a very easy task. It's the same as usual. So reset our expression here. Say we want to connect to this 40 uh, teeth wheel. Link it here. Say, okay, this other wheel has 40 teeth. And now this with the inner teeth has 150 teeth and click apply. So this is so with the R rotation. Oops, I didn't want to enter here. Of course, 150, 150. Now I select the layer and click R and to this rotation, I apply the expression. And now if you look, you can see it is rotating in the wrong direction. Yeah, From this wheel, if you look, it should rotate downwards, but it's rotating upwards. And this is what happens for uh, wheels with chains at or with teeth at the inner side. You need to mark this flip direction such that they go into the correct direction. I select again the rotation and hit apply. And now you can see again it moves perfectly. Yeah. So in short, again, very easy usage of the cogwheels I expression just link to the respective other wheel if it is parented link to the respective parent. Enter here the number of teeth of the wheel itself. Here the number of teeth of the other wheel. And if you have such a wheel with teeth at the inner side, click at the flip direction to get the uh, correct direction at all. Okay, apart from that, let me mention that uh, the motion blur works perfectly also with this expression. So you can enable your layers click on motion blur here and if you now have very fast movement let's say I go here with the keyframes closer together such that everything uh, goes quite fast and I enable motion blur for my composition you can see you get blur here too yeah, or let me here increase even the rotation let's say it should do here 10 rotations and if you now go here, you can see you get very nice motion blur. So one interesting special case is the one where you have something like barrels. Yeah? So let me bring this one here in and also scale this down somehow. Let's say we keep here for the sake of demonstration, keep it a bit larger. And let's say this one should rotate with this one here. Yeah, this is uh, like two barrels. This one is a one and this one is the other one and they are connected. So this one should also rotate according to this one. Of course, we can do it as before with our eye expression. So I reset the eye expression and say it should rate according to this inner wheel here. Yeah, This here is this inner wheel. And I link to its rotation, so I select it and link it here because this barrel should follow this thing here. And then the question is, of course, what do I enter here as number of T's? Yeah, I mean, you can imagine this one here, okay, it has 150 T's and this one here, it looks as if it had six T's, but these T's don't have anything to do with each other. Yeah, So, I mean, they, they don't fit, these ones are much smaller, they, they, they're not two chain wheels or two, two cock wheels. Yeah? Um, and for this, we can use something very special, namely, you can enter here instead of the number of T's, also the diameter or the circumference of these two wheels. Yeah, And we can measure this very easily. I click on this here and look in the info panel here at this X coordinate of my cursor. Yeah, if you look here at this end, the X coordinate of my cursor is 565. 565. And at this point here, at the left end, it is 361. So I said minus 361. So you can use any field in I expressions as kind of a pocket calculator. Return enter, and now you know the distance from here to here is 204. And now in exactly the same way, you can uh, measure the diameter of this large thing here. So it goes from here to here. So this means in this other wheel diameter, 
we say this right endpoint is 1446. Yeah, I can see it here. 1446 minus, and the left end, again, watch here, is um, about 554 minus 554 return. So this means this one has a diameter of 204 pixels, this one of 890 two pixels. And if we apply this to the rotation of the barrel, apply, now you can see that it nicely moves as expected. So in other words, barrels are handled exactly as chain wheels or as cocks, except that you enter here the diameter and not the number of T's. The last nice feature of this cogwheels eye expression that I want to show you is that it also works with 3D layers. So we can select all our layers here, for example, and turn them into 3D layers, and still everything works as expected. Yeah. If you work with 3D layers, make sure to apply the eye expression to the Z rotation, and then everything works as usual. And we can use this, for example, to create some nice uh, shadows. So let me just take the background layer and move it a bit apart in 3D space. And for this we then also need to scale it. So scale it up again to fill the entire space. And now let's add a layer a new light, parallel light. This is all okay. And for the light set the option to um, cast shadows. And for all these layers, except for the background, we need to set the option to material options to um, cast shadows on. And if we do this, you can see here for our layers, we get these nice off and now on again. Here, these nice shadows. And of course, you can now start playing with the lighting and start color correcting these different. Uh, uh, wheels here and so on to get a nice uh, a nice uh, pleasing result. But apart from this, uh, I think the project is finished. Now you get the idea. Yeah, for 3D layers it works exactly as for 2D layers. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed working with this Cogwheels eye expression. A big, big thank you goes out to Hans-Jürgen Steite, because he prepared actually these images for all these cogwheels here and also prepared the, uh, the sample project. So very great help uh, from, from this guy, Hans-Jürgen Steite. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you join in again for the next tutorial. <laughs>